I'm just going to get this out of the way right off the bat. That way we can have a nice, entertaining, productive diecast review. I just knew you was going to fucking crash at Nashville. I just fucking knew it. Anyways, today is going to be a review of Zach Veach, I mean Colton Herta's 2021 Gamebridge Honda for Andretti Autosport, obviously made by Greenlight in the 1 to 18th scale. Now, obviously, this one was announced pre-road course arrow kit, so we get on the oval arrow kit. And if you watch my Alexander Rossi review, we also talked about how the numbers on the rear wing um, and how that's not necessarily accurate, and that's the same scenario here. But it does add a nice little bit of color to a relatively boring rear wing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this die cast. Obviously, it being a 2021 release, it's also in Andretti's new corporate livery scheme. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the nose. So on the nose, we have Gamebridge with the Andretti Autosport silver nose uh, and their logo. Delara, Genesis Auto Nation, Napa Auto Parts, THL. <laughs> That will not be on this car next year. Um, Gamebridge, Honda, NTT IndyCar Series. The number 26, of course, and then Gamebridge. Um, here's a good question. How many, or what has more Gamebridge logos on it? This car or the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Probably the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, anyways, we have two Gamebridge logos here on the headrest with the Andretti Autosport logo as well. And once again, like the Alexander Rossi car, this one also has the um, different colored headrests compared to the rest of the car. And I talked very much highly of that um, in the Rossi review and kind of the same thing here. It does highlight it well. Um, we have Gamebridge two more times on the arrow screen. And then once again, we can see that little issue of the decaling overlapping, or overlapping each other. And you can obviously see the uh, changes in decaling parts. We also have Honda here and then NTT IndyCar Series, as well as PPG. The number 26 here, loud and proud on the roll hoop with a blue camera pod. Um, also in blue are the mirrors with the Siemens logos on them with Firestone. Um, Gamebridge, uh, there's the Gamebridge arrow and then on the side pod. Um, and there we got a couple more sponsors like Capstone, BSAF, Curb Records, and Sherwin Williams Paints. Also here we have Rough Rider. And then back in there, we have two sponsors that literally could not afford to be anywhere visible on the car, so they're kind of stuck in there. They paid their money, but it just wasn't enough. On the engine cover, we have Powered by Honda, Gamebridge, and then HPD, as well as the Speedway logo, um, or Speedway logo that's gonna be not there next year because it's gonna be a Team Penske sponsor. I wonder why. Um, Group 1001, which somehow has not somehow has not been investigated by the federal government for some sort of money laundering bullshit or something, something, something. It just seems like one of those companies that would, okay? I'm not bashing the sponsor or anything like that, but I'm just saying, Group 1001, no one's heard of it until they started sponsoring Zach Beach, and they also have a couple different sub dairies in two completely different sectors. Um, anyways, Gamebridge and then Curb Records. Over here, check it for Andretti. As a friendly reminder, um, go get your buttholes checked. Um, anyways, HPD, uh, Stratasys, and then P1 NTT Pull Award, which he has won a couple of. Um, on the rear wing, we have Group 1001. And even though my previous comment about Group 1001, it's great to see their presence still there somewhat in IndyCar. And then as per mentioned, we also have the number 26 there on the rear wing. Um, actually, I want to go over this. So we have a yellow fin on it, but there is, and I don't know if you can tell it that well, but there is some overspray issues onto the actual engine cover. Um, green light, again, it seems like every one of these I get, there's some sort of quality control issue, and this one is no exception. At the back, literally the same as always. Over here, Literally the same as the other side. Um, I will say though, this livery does work really well. And to show it off, compared to what we got last year, we have the actual OGs, Zach Veach's car. And you can see the difference in the liveries. I like this one better. I like the Herta better because where the yellow, the yellow placement on it works a lot better. It looks more like a 
complete liberty. Um, like, no, no disrespect to Zachy Veach over here. Um, this car looks better. I like this driver better. Why can't we just get the best of both worlds? Why can't we have Veach in this car? But, oh uh, well. You can also say this is a Hinchcliffe car, too. Um, technically. Technically. But, overall, though, I really do like this car. I mean, the livery on it is fantastic. Again, not a fan of the driver, but the livery on it is absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's one of those things where, I mean, Colton Herta finally gets away from Harding Steinbrenner, whatever, whatever, James Hinchcliffe's team. Um, and it's good to see him with a secure ride, pretty much the next Alexander Rossi, because totally Alexander Rossi is getting old. Man, it only seems like five years ago he was like the young gun and the star of the series. Oh, wait. That was five years ago. I'm getting old, guys. I really am. Um, anyways, so that's really it for the review. I mean, I love the new Penske corporate livery. Um, it is a fantastic looking car. Um, again, not so sure about that Group 1001, but... I mean, the game bridge looks amazing, though. So, anyways, that's really it for this review. Kept it short, sweet, and to the point, and very few jokes and or puns or whatever. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up button, and we will see you in the next review, whenever that is. Sometime soon, I hope. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.